Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. In this episode, we have a ton of crypto news to cover. So if you guys enjoy it, make sure you press that like button. Having said that, this was by far the most important announcement of the entire day. There's actually two very important announcements, and even though we already covered them in the stream of earlier today, I wanted to give it a little bit more title room, a little bit more time for all the people, uh, and I guess also give another chance for some of the people who don't watch my live streams to see this news as it's a very big deal. VeChain became the first official Layer 1 blockchain partner of USC. Basically, VeChain partnering up or sponsoring UFC, and it's a very big deal. Now, even though this specific press release here doesn't talk about numbers, I don't think, I'm assuming this is most likely a 100 million, if not, not more, uh, deal, as they have hundreds of millions of viewers, and over on the social media channels, they have a ton of people, and Vichin is basically going to be everywhere. Vichin will have a branded presence inside UFC's world-famous Octagon at all 42, uh, 42 events, for example, and they'll create some specific content with UFC fighters. Again, guys, one thing to make sure you understand is that it's not VeChain X UFC on sort of sort of supply chain update or, or anything in that little bracket. No, it is basically VeChain paying UFC for marketing. It's literally a marketing partnership. And then the second very big announcement of the day has to, of course, also be provided as PayPal. They basically allowed you to now transfer, send, and receive crypto from other wallets and exchanges. They basically opened themselves up. At first, we talked before about how PayPal can become a platform that basically has, you know, 2 million Bitcoin inside of it, which will never leave again because they do not allow for it. And they would just rather buy it up, buy it up, buy it up, and the people can trade on there. But the Bitcoin would basically never leave. Now, however, they've opened it up, and that's a really, really big deal. Now, that's it for the little summary, all right? I also talked about Chainlink earlier in the stream uh, and why it was pumping, but right now, I mean, Chainlink is not really pumping anymore. It was basically pumping due to some announcements. Yeah, it's only up about 4%, not even anymore. So here we go with some real news, though. There's some very negative news over in Lithuania. Apparently, they are going to ban wallets following the EU regulation. Well, even though in the EU, they're not really going forward with it just quite yet. The EU's recent decision to restrict transfers between unhosted wallets and centralized exchanges is already having an impact, as Lithuania, I guess, becomes the first to ban non-custodial crypto wallets, as what they're basically going to do is make sure that if you're not transferring to some sort of KYC wallet, it's basically like sending money to a, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, illegal bank account, as they don't know who you are, so you're basically money laundering in some way, shape, or form and they're not really too happy with that, so they're officially going to ban it. This is very bad, as if the EU as a whole basically follows. I mean, the EU has itself made the regulation, but let's say that every country in the EU follows, yeah, that's very negative for the progress of crypto. Then again, I think it will be reversed eventually, but that could be rather annoying. On the other end, of course, guys, we're noticing that crypto is getting in more and more of these sectors all around the world, specifically, for example, retirement. That's one of the most quickly growing issues, I guess. So not issues like the quick, quickest growing points. Yellen, however, wouldn't recommend crypto for most retirement savers. It's a very risky investment. And that's actually something I should really make clear as well. Do I believe crypto will succeed? Very much so. Have I got 99% of my liquid net worth into crypto? Absolutely. Do I think you can easily retire with it? Absolutely. And will I recommend most of my viewers to try it out for retirement? I would highly think that that's the best option. Let me say it like that. But I would need to make that really clear. It is a riskier thing. It depends kind of on what you compare it to. Because if you say, for example, stocks. Now, if you look back over a longer period of stocks, they've done really well. We don't know when it's going to turn around, though. It could definitely you know, not perform. But if we talk about historical performance, crypto is a lot more volatile and thus a lot more risky. Volatile risk, you guys get it's the same thing, basically. And in that ballpark, I'm also thinking, well most likely, again, most, most, most likely, it's not for all people, all right? Even though stocks are inherently not that safe either, fiat money is not that safe. Let's not go too far into that. Let's just look at the volatility plainly and understand, yeah, it's a lot, uh, crypto is a lot more volatile than stocks and whatnot. And if you're getting towards that age, let's say you're 60, you know, you have a couple more years to go before your retirement, what's the safer option? You know, and they, they often say, um, the older you get, the more you should go for bonds rather than stocks, for example, as the risk just becomes greater. That's one thing I do want to make clear. I think if you're going for actual retirement portfolio and you, you're not like more than 10 years away, because I think if you do 10 years, you have a lot of time. 
I guess even more than, um, then again, there's a lot of caveats to all of this. It also depends on how much money you already have, how much you need to get to, what other retirement parts you have, but sure. I just think it should be a smaller percentage because of risk. Then again, if you you know need to get to a bigger retirement number, this might be the only way, for example. So would I personally recommend it? I say absolutely yes. Is it riskier though? Yes. So I wouldn't say the best thing is to go all in, but I do think there should be a significant portion into it. But again, my thoughts. Same thing goes for any safety little pots. I said this before, right? Always have some sort of safety net. And I actually made a couple of videos about this over on my Business Realm channel. It was just where I... Had a little thought of making some sort of educational videos a little while ago. And one of the videos I made was about what is sort of smart in the investing realm, like having a little safety bracket and whatnot. But go check, it, uh, go check that out. Bitcoin dominance rate reaches new yearly high. Apparently, Bitcoin dominance rate is getting pretty high again, which basically means people are prioritizing Bitcoin over altcoins. And very often we see these little breakouts where altcoins start to go wild rather quickly afterwards. But for right now, the Bitcoin dominance is actually breaking out. So that basically showcases more and more people are going for Bitcoin rather than a lot of altcoins, which again, to me, is a really bullish sign because that means that the price, since the price is not really dumping on most of these altcoins too much, but the dominance for Bitcoin is going up this much, I see that as a good thing because that means eventually alts will spike again because usually that's the little motion which we see where there's eventually going to be a crazy spike very often from this area yet again as well. Yeah, it could be very bullish for altcoins. Talking about altcoins, Luna 2.0. We actually talked about this briefly during the stream, but apparently they're going really far downhill. I'm not sure what the price is doing, but personally, I don't really care. I'm not really a big fan of Luna 2.0 anyway. It's going downhill, though, as the investigation about security violations are continuing on. Over in the U.S., Luna 2.0 is not going to be given a break. Understand this. Realize this. Luna 2.0 is going to get, even 1.0, it's going to get some heavy investigation. And most likely, the SEC will come up with some sort of negative news eventually. Little update here. JC and Jack Dorsey are launching Bitcoin for Kids program. It's kind of funny. It says here, a program to help underserve, undes, underserve, wow, kids learn that you can Lose all your money on an unstable currency that is ruining the planet. But no, at the end of the day, basically it's like a little financy course, mostly regarding crypto, which I think is really, really nice. A little bit of news regarding Cardano. Apparently, Cardano proponents envision a new ADA all-time high soon, as groundbreaking Vasil Heart forecloses in. So I don't really know exactly how that would work or why the price would go to an all-time high because of one smaller fork like that. But people are saying because of the uh, new hard fork, the scalability will increase so significantly that all of a sudden the price is going to pump like crazy or something of this sort. I'm not exactly sure how or why this makes sense. Then again, I am pretty bullish on this update, so I'm not going to be negative about it. I'm just saying it's a little bit strange to, um, to, to write it this way. Now, before we move on, guys, make sure you check out Margix. It's a crypto exchange that I personally use quite often, as you guys have most likely seen. You can start trading with as little as $10. And I would honestly say it's one of the easiest crypto exchanges around. I've already expressed to you guys exactly how it works a dozen times by now, but one of the easiest features about this is that you can use almost any single crypto that you deposit on there and trade almost any single pair that they have. Again, this is for traders, not for people who want to buy crypto. So, but for serious traders who want to you know, trade the crypto, obviously. They focus on a lot of different points, as you can probably understand, but one of the ones they made as easy as possible um, I guess to phrase it <laughs> in, a, in a kind of easy way, is to make sure it's as friendly for the user as possible. How? Well, there's not really too many buttons to click. It's made in the most simple way that I can fathom for leverage trading, but you'll most likely see more of that as you get into it and kind of explore it. They also have a couple other cool features, like for example, the price manipulation protection and a $50 bonus right now. So if you have not checked it out just quite yet, a link is down below, go check out Margex. And just to briefly show you guys again, what I meant at the start, guys, is if, for example, I have some Bitcoin in here, I can actually utilize this Bitcoin to trade XRP right now. Again, I don't have to show you guys exactly how to open a trade. We've done this a dozen thousand times on this channel by now. But again, here's the amount of money that we want to trade, which at this point is, for example, 0 0.11 Bitcoin or about 16% of our balance. Why? Well, because we used 5x leverage. You can see the exact price I wanted to buy it at. And again, it looks 40 cents, huh? but I'm trading Bitcoin, right? No, I'm trading XRP and I can put in Bitcoin to actually go ahead and do that, which I think is rather interesting. Here you can see the actual cost. And again, buy basically means I think the price is gonna go up. Sell means I think the price is gonna go down. And this leverage, for anybody that does not know, it's crazy how high the leverage can go on this platform for a lot of these altcoins, which is pretty unique. But that is to showcase that, again, I'm trading 0.11 Bitcoin worth 
but you can see over on the right here in uh, in very small manner. Even though I'm trading $3.5 thousand dollars, it is only costing me $230 to do so. And again, as I change the leverage, that number also changes. Here, if I want to trade the, let's say for example, I want to trade ten thousand dollars, then you can see here. Um, let's say, oh, I, I actually messed up a little bit. Let's do ten thousand dollars. Then, mm -mm -mm. let's see it here. If we put in 50x leverage, for example, it's 200 bucks. Next is a very important thing you guys all need to be aware of. The Fear and Greed Index is low yet again. It's actually at 11 right now. Next update is coming out in about 50 minutes as it gets to 2 a.m. But the only thing I wanted to make clear right here about this situation, and I think that's very important, is it stays low for a little bit until it pumps. Let me Let me reiterate that. I basically said this about the nine weeks in a row of negative price action Bitcoin as well. It'll be green at one point. I know it's the roulette approach, which is like, well, but it could be 53 weeks in a row of negative price action. Sure. But we've seen Bitcoin dominance pop up. Fear and greed index stay low. An extreme amount, again, the highest amount ever of negative weekly candle closes for Bitcoin. All these three things are very bearish on the short term. But if you look at it from the broader picture, the fact that we've been going so negative with a slight you know, sideways bias for the last month, but let's say so negative for such a long amount of time. Spike, all right, spike. People have been fearful for this long yet. It's not really crashed. To me, that shows a big spike is in the near perimeter here, but I'll leave that for you guys to decide. Again, Bitcoin is already going way above the scope of what I could have ever predicted. This is our little expectation of Bitcoin's price back in somewhere in you know, the middle half of 2020 or so. And just for fun here, here's roughly my idea of where Bitcoin is about to head over the next couple of weeks. I still think over the next couple of months, Bitcoin can easily go towards 70,000, if not plus. And all the altcoins, which I mentioned in this video, I'm pretty bullish on and I hold. Except for Luna 2.0, because that is absolute garbage, in my opinion. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you press that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you've not done it yet, make sure you check out Marjex. A link for that will be down below. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.